Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another United Worship Services with Roxborough Church, Wissahickon Church, and Watershed Church. I'm Eric McMahon, the pastor of Watershed Church, and we're so happy that you're joining us online today. You know, it's, it's been a real strange season for all of us, we know, and, and not coming to church and meeting together is, has kind of taken its toll, but we're really happy that we can join together in spirit and worship together. And, you know, I'm really excited uh, that Ray reached out to us uh, several weeks ago when this whole coronavirus thing started and say, hey, what if we did a united worship service together? And I think it's really important uh, because God thinks that it's important for the church to be united. I'm just going to read real quick out of Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 19. It says, consequently, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as a chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So church, it doesn't matter whether you're part of Roxborough Church or Wissahickon Church or Watershed Church or, or some other church. Maybe you're even in a different state. It doesn't matter what tribe you belong to. We are all being built together as members of the church of Jesus Christ in which his spirit will dwell. And so join with us together as we worship, man. Stand up in your living rooms and sing with us, shout with us, amen. When you hear Pastor Ray bring the message and he brings a really good point or something that really strikes you and that God says yes and your soul agrees with, man, just participate with us like you would if you were here in person. And let someone else know that you're watching this service today so that they can participate too and we can give hope and love in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God, we love you so much, Lord, and, and we thank you that you're constant no matter what happens, no matter what the trials are in our life, no matter what the changes are that we experience. And God, we thank you that we are not alone, but God, you have knit us together with other believers, with other churches, not just in Roxborough, not just in Philadelphia, but around the world. And so, God, I pray today that as we join together and watch this worship service, Lord, that we would lift our voices loud, Lord, that we would offer you our praise and that you would receive it as a fragrant offering. Lord, I pray that you speak through Pastor Ray today, and God, that we wouldn't just be hearers of your word, but we would be doers also, and that our lives would be changed because we've encountered the one true and living God through the word preached today. God, I pray that you inhabit the praises of your people this morning and that we do indeed worship you in spirit and in truth. We love you, Lord, and we ask all this in Jesus' name and by the power of his blood, amen. Amen. Let's worship together. Good morning, everyone. Let's worship together in song. Oh, dear. 
trust in our Lord that he bore our sins on the cross that we are forgiven through Jesus that he rose from the dead so that we may have our everlasting life and it's because of that that we could say that it is well when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot you have told
stuck in our houses, just wondering what's going to be next. I've been singing this song to just kind of bring comfort to me during this time, just to remember my need for Jesus, and that he is there to provide for us. Let's sing this song together. Lord, I come and I confess Bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Let's lift this up. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Thank you, worship team. That was wonderful. Wasn't that great? Um, this is the time during most services, if we were together, where we would receive an offering. And so um, I just want to encourage you right now just to stop and take a minute and think about what God might have you uh, to participate and give in worship uh, towards, towards your church. Um, there's, there's a link uh, in the description of this video with how you can give either online or via text or even mailing in a gift to your church. And we always talk about at, um, that giving is something that we do as an act of worship and as an act of faith. It's an act of worship because we believe that everything we have is a good gift from God. And so we worship him 
by giving a small portion back to use for his purposes. And we do that in the context of the local church. And it's an act of faith because if, if you're like me, sometimes it's hard to give that money to the church because there's a bunch of other things that, that it needs to really be used for. And so we have faith that when we give to God, he's going to provide for all of our needs. In fact, this is what the Bible says about giving. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, starting in verse 7. It says, Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So if that's your heart towards giving, and you just have a heart that's full of gladness and that wants to worship God and rely and live on faith, uh, then we invite you to participate in giving today to, to, to your local church, to one of the churches that are participating in the service. And we just want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts because we believe that God's going to bless you when you give and that God's going to take your gift and multiply it and use it so that we could show his love to Philadelphia and to the world. God bless you. Hey guys, Pastor Ricky here. So excited to be with you guys again on this Sunday for our Kids Challenge. Listen, grab your brothers and sisters, come join me in front of the TV because it's time to level up. Hey guys, this is my friend Al. Al, I have to share with you something and our friends watching uh, that I found out this morning. I think that I have superpowers. Yo, what's up, Ricky? And I totally do not believe that. What? Look, look, look. What, what would it take for you to believe me? And I need to see it to believe it. You need to see it? I'm one of those guys. That, yeah. that's, that's fair. So I have this card here, right? Can you tell our friends it looks like a normal card, right? It's queen, queen of hearts. Queen of hearts. Awesome, awesome. Well, I think that I can bend this card with my mind. Do you believe that? I need to see it, my man. I, All right, I ready? don't know. I don't know. All right. Watch closely. Yo. Okay. That is some like Marvel stuff right there, man. That crazy. is crazy. Crazy, right? Crazy. I just found out this morning. That's amazing. It's wild. It's wild. But guys, check this out. Sometimes I think, and I think you would agree, Al, that it's hard to believe something until you see it, right? Super hard. Yeah, yeah. So this kind of reminds me of our story for today. Um, there's this guy named Thomas, and for those of, uh, for those of you that were watching last week, uh, we pick up where Jesus, he died, they poked holes in his hands and his side, but then he resurrected and showed up to some of his disciples. And so let's pick up where we left off. On the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were together. They had locked the doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Jesus came in and stood among them. He said, may peace be with you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were very happy when they saw the Lord. Thomas was one of the 12 disciples. He was also called Didymus. He was not with the other disciples when Jesus came. So they told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, first, I must see the nail marks in his hands. I must put my finger where the nails were, and I must put my hand in his side. Only then will I believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were in the house again. Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them. He said, may peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. Wow, what a great story. You see, Jesus wasn't angry at Thomas for not believing. In fact, Jesus loved Thomas. And even though Thomas had doubts, like we all do, Jesus made sure to appear before Thomas so that Thomas could believe. Now, it's kind of like us, right? We sometimes have doubts. And I know in my life as a Christian, I struggled sometimes to believe if God existed, if God cared about me, if he loved me. But I know that Jesus loved me and helps, helped me to believe uh, over and over again, whether it was through his word or friends um, and, or just praying to him and, and asking him to help me. 
And so for all of us, sometimes, and especially in this time, we can be struggling with doubts and it's okay. You don't have to be ashamed that you doubt and you don't have to fear your doubts. We can take these to God. But I have three things that I think we can do to help us in these times when we're doubting. And they all begin with A, so really easy. First A stands for admit. Admit to God that you doubt, right? God knows everything anyway. And so admit to God that you have doubts. And God is, is more than powerful enough to handle your doubts when you bring them to him. The next thing is attack. And I don't mean like attack with a sword or anything like that. I mean, attack your doubts with God's word, with his promises. And so uh, if we constantly are reading the Bible and, and thinking about what God says and his promises, that can give us assurance of faith in those moments when we doubt. There are also uh, two books, parents, that I recommend uh, for you and your kids. Uh, the first one is Case for Christ uh, by Lee Strobel. And the second one is Cold Case Christianity by J. Warner Wallace. Those two books are amazing. They're available for kids and adults alike. And I think they help us to, to believe or have answers to why we believe that Jesus existed, that he died and that he actually resurrected. And they can also be a big help in those moments when we're doubting. And the last thing is ask God for his help. Um, I'm reminded about this story in the Bible in addition to this one where there was a man who struggled to doubt that Jesus could heal his son. And in that moment, Jesus asked him, do you believe? And what the man said, I think was really awesome. He said this, he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And I think that's the prayer that we can offer to God, that when we're struggling with doubt, we can say, God, I'm, I'm believing, I'm trying to believe. Please help me uh, believe. Help me when I'm struggling to believe. Help my unbelief. And so those are three things I think we can take with us as we think about in those moments when we're doubting. Here's how we can uh, find encouragement and find strength in those moments. And so I hope that encourages you. Parents, as always, there are resources below this video under Kids Challenge that are going to be extremely helpful to helping your kids in those moments and uh, that will help you as well. And so I'm going to pray for us and pray for our uh, morning sermon this morning. And so would you join me in a word of prayer? Father God, thank you so much that you help us believe that you're not ashamed of us when we doubt um, and you're able to help us and encourage us when we do, that we can take these things to you, God. Um, thank you that your word encourages us and gives us, helps us to have faith um, in moments when we doubt. And God, that we can ask you for, for help, just like that man asked, help my unbelief. God, help us all to trust you in those moments of doubt. And God, would you bless uh, your word this morning in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, friends. See you next week. Friends, would you pray with me? Father God, it is so good to be able to worship you, to be able to honor you with our voices. God, while we're not gathered physically with the rest of our church, Lord, it's good to be in our homes and, and uh, just being able to cry out to you. I pray, God, that you would have received the songs that we were singing. I pray, God, that the, the things we've committed to you in our hearts to give, I pray, God, that that would be an act of worship to you as well. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Ricky, who brought a great message for the kids. And I pray, Lord God, that you would tie his message for the kids and this message for the entire church together. God, that, uh, that they would be united the same way our churches are united in this act of worship to you. Oh, Father God, be honored, be glorified, and enjoy this time as your children, the people of God, lean in to the word you have prepared for them. In Jesus' name, amen. You might be looking at me and thinking, wow, Pastor Ray, you, you have on the norm. And I've got my, uh, this is not headgear, this is normally face gear. It's pretty, pretty common to you these days. And I've got my hand sanitizer, which we've been using up. You can see, by the way, we're just about out on this one. So we're running down low. And, and I've got all these things that help this season to feel a bit more normal. But the reality is we're in a time that's might be normal at some point, but doesn't yet quite feel that way. And no matter how many times I practice taking off and putting on the mask or how many times I sanitize the hands and the mic as we pass it back and forth, no matter how many times we prepare to 
to, to kind of lean into what has become socially acceptable distance of six feet away from each other. Can I just be honest with you, church? I miss getting together. I miss huddling together. I miss, I miss greeting you with a handshake or a hug. I miss the high fives. I, I, I miss walking up and down the aisles of the sanctuary with us all together. Maybe you miss some of those things too. I want to invite you right now, in the midst of missing those things, to listen carefully because I think God has a word for us this morning. As Pastor Ricky, Pastor Ricky was teaching the kids this morning, uh, I'm going to pick up that same story in John chapter 20. And uh, if you're going to get your own Bibles and follow along, it's John chapter 20, and it's going to start in the 19th verse. And we'll just kind of go along, and we're going to going to tease out some things from these scriptures to help us apply these to our lives today. John chapter 20, starting in the 19th verse. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. What was it like to be huddled in the house? What was it like to, to be gathered around and have fear of what might be going on out there? And so you were tied in, you were, you were settled in, and, and, and this was the story of the early disciples. They were fearful of what was happening outside of their proximity. And so together in that upper room, they, they gathered, they, they sat, they, 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 they locked themselves off from everyone else. I can imagine them passing back and forth words of concern or apprehension. I can imagine them wondering what it would be like when, when they went back out there again and, and whether they would be uh, engaged or accepted or whether, whether they would be wrestled for their lives or whether they'd have to run. I mean, their Messiah, their leader, the, the Christ, had just, he had been crucified. He had died and, and the tomb was empty and, 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 and that made sense and yet it was still so confusing. I mean, this had never happened before. There was no precedent to look back on. I love that the Scripture starts by saying that they had a fear, and his response, his being Jesus, his response was that he came and he stood among them. The first thing I want to help us to understand this morning is that when we face the fears of life, when we have things that we're battling against, when we have things that, that we seem to just say, God, I, I don't know what to do with this. I, I am literally afraid. We often think we live in those moments alone. But the Scripture shows that in this instance, the first thing that happened was Jesus showed up. By the way, can I just pause for a moment and say this? It doesn't say that the disciples cried out to God and then God showed up. It doesn't say that the disciples wore themselves out beckoning God to please come and do something. It said that it was on the heart of the Father first. Jesus showed up showed up. And I think a lot of us right now are in seasons where we're wondering how and why, what's going to happen? And I want to say this as clearly as I can. Jesus is showing up. Eyes wide open. Let's identify where God is at work amongst us. And let's celebrate what God is still doing. In the midst of our fears, the Bible says that Jesus showed up, and he stayed with them. He, he stood among them. And then he said this, peace be with you. Now, this would have been like a, a normal greeting of the time. It, it's kind of how we would say, hey, what's up, or hello, or high five. It's, it's how you might get greeted when you walk into your church on Sunday morning when people are standing at the door ready to welcome you in. 
This would have been casual and comfortable for them to hear, but, but there's also something deeper in this. Because Jesus, the one who just went to the cross, the one who descended into hell and rose again from the dead, Jesus the Messiah, in the midst of the fears of life, he said, peace. Let your heart be still. Let your heart not be troubled. Let the peace that can only come from the Father be present with you. And I imagine somebody out there this morning needs to sit back on their couch and just say, the peace of Christ is with me. And they might need to remind themselves of that over and over God, over and over again, that they would believe that. God, your peace is amongst us. God, you're here. God, no matter how tough this is, you're here. You know, when I say how tough this is, many of us immediately think back to our masks and our sanitizer, and we think to the virus that's out there, but that's not the only battle we're facing. There's many folks today who are going to be listening in who, who are having struggles at home. Marriages are struggling. People are struggling at work. People are struggling being out of work. All kind of things that might induce fear. And to each of those moments, the first response of Christ is that he shows up. And his word to us is peace be with you. Peace be with you. It goes on here, and if you look down with me in the 22nd verse, it says that after he said, peace be with you, he says this, and with that, he breathed on them. Now, I know, I know. When we're thinking about breathing on somebody right away, we're like, Ugh! that's not so kosher in this moment. But, but let's understand, this wasn't a COVID moment for them. So he breathed on them, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. I mean, think about this. When Jesus breathed on the disciples, he didn't just, like, it wasn't just like, hey, ah, ah, ah. he was literally saying, as I breathe this on you, I give you my power. I give you my presence give you authority. He goes on and says it this way. He says, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, then they are not forgiven. Jesus breathes on them and gifts the, 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 his disciples. He gifts them his, his presence in the Holy Spirit. And with that, the authority of God, the power now, I, I, we started off by recognizing that they were gathered together in fear. Remember, they were scared. They were, they were huddled up. They were, I, I don't know how we're going to make it through this. Jesus comes in. He says, ah, peace. And then he confirms that peace with the gift of the Holy Spirit. That same gift that's a seal and a, prom a promise and a seal for us. Today, if, we, if we're in a relationship with Jesus Christ, if, if we've yielded our life to Jesus, then we've been gifted the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit is a sign and a seal in our life that we belong to the Father. But that Holy Spirit that dwells within us is the power and the presence of God. So by the way, if you're sitting on your couch or if you're standing in your living room and, and you're in a place of fear, can I say this? He's there. You're not alone. He's with you. The peace of Christ present with you. And the power and the authority of God present in your life. Now, we know the rest of the story. As you pick it up in verse 24, it says that Thomas, you know, the, the one that was named Didymus, Didymus 
He was one of the 12 as well, but he was not with the disciples when Jesus had came. And so the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. You can imagine it, right? Like, they, they didn't just say, hey, you know, like, oh, by the way, you know, we were in the house, and, and Jesus showed up, and, you know, just an everyday kind of thing. I mean, they went from deadly, deathly afraid of what was going to happen to, to, to zealous with joy. Like, we saw the Lord, like the one who was on the cross, resurrected. He was, he was here. He showed up right here. I mean, it, it is, it's filled with joy and excitement and, and like, like, and like, like just a, a deep desire to run into the world. Like, we've seen him. He's here. He's back. He's with us. And Thomas, he's wrestling with FOMO. He thinks he missed out on something. You know, like, I, I don't know about you, but I've got a friend in my life. He, he's also the youth pastor at my church, and and uh, he, he's he's uh, I'll confess for him. He's 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 really excited about buying sneakers, and uh, and so he shared this app with me, and uh, and and on this app, every time I look at this app, it tells me when the new sneaker is dropping, and so just like 15 minutes before the new sneaker launches, I get a text, and it says, you know, get ready in 15 minutes you can buy the newest sneaker. And I get so excited that for 15 minutes, I'm like, I want to be the first one to hit the button. I want to hit the button. I want to hit the button. And then all of a sudden, I'm filled with like anxiety and fear that I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out. Somebody else is going to get the new sneakers before me. By the way, this just happened this week. The Jordan 4s just launched, and I missed it. I mean, I was hitting the button, but somebody else hit it faster than me. And I missed it. And I know what's going to happen. In about five days, my youth pastor is going to come walking into church. Well, not a lot of us will be in church, but, but he'll come as we prepare our service for, for next week. And, and he'll have on those new Jordan 4s. And it's going to remind me that I missed out. Thomas is kind of wrestling with the missing out. Like, you know, you guys all said you saw that, you saw Jesus come back, but, but I didn't see that. I mean, I wasn't there. Like, I, I, I want to I believe that it happened because, I mean, you're so excited about it. Like, obviously it happened, but, but I missed out. And so the story goes on to tell us what happens as a result. So the other disciples in verse 25, so the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord, but Thomas said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, right about here, we probably heard for many, many times before, we've heard this story and, and, uh, and we've, we've kind of looked at Thomas and said, I cannot believe that Thomas wouldn't believe. But actually, as we read the Scripture, I want to just say this. As we read the Scripture, what Thomas is saying isn't absurd. He said, you guys already saw it. You were with Jesus. You, you touched. You know for certain that, that he was right there with you. I didn't get to do that. I need that same level of assurance. I need that same sense of promise. I need to know that I didn't miss out completely. And so it says a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas this time was with them. Thomas being with them, to me, reminds me that even though Thomas had some questions about, hey, I missed out, or did that happen, or whatever, he said, I'm, still, I'm, I'm, I'm staying in this. I'm not running away. I'm bringing back to the house with everybody else all the concerns that I got, all the confusion that's with me, all the fears that I'm facing. I'm going to stay in this together with you. Can I just invite you to do the same right now? Like right where you're at, like just make a commitment today. Like no matter what is, what's going on at home or what's going on in the depths of your heart or the rest on your mind, during this time when we can't be together, just recommit with your church. Join in. Recognize that there's value in the body staying connected. 
That's what Thomas was doing in this moment. He said, I'm going to stay here and stay connected until I get this thing figured out. And uh, verse 20, uh, 26, the second half of 26, it says, Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. He showed up again in the midst of all the confusion, all the concern, all the uncertainty, in the midst of the fear of FOMO, like he showed up again. And he said, peace be with you. The presence of God present in your midst. Peace be with you. And then he looked at Thomas, verse 27. He said, put your finger here. See, uh, re- see my hands. Reach your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Somebody here today, and it might just be me, but somebody else here today maybe as well, needs to be reminded that God is not only present, but he is continuing to give evidence of who he is, confirming that he desires to overcome the fears of your life. Ray, reach out and touch me. I'm here with you. I'm present. I want nothing more than for you to know that. Thomas responds to him by saying, my Lord and my God. And this is a a declaration. This isn't just like a, oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. This is a, my Lord. My God, it's you. I surrender. I yield. I accept your authority in my life. God, I'm in. I'm with you. COVID or not, I'm going to hug you. Uh, I'm going to get right next to you right now. Thomas draws in with Jesus. Friends, I want to identify a couple of things that might be good takeaways for us today. For all of us to think about how to apply this passage to our lives, I want you to think about this. First, Jesus came and he dwelt among them. And that didn't just happen then. It happens now in our lives. Jesus has a desire to be present with you right where you're at. He desires for you to to know him and to be known by him. He desires for for you to to be tied with him. He desires to be in in, in the things that you you find joy in, but he also desires to be present with you in the fears that you're facing. You need not face these things alone. You can lean into the Father God God. As Pastor Ricky said, we can admit our doubts or our fears. God, here's what's going on. God, here's what's ahead of me. God, here's what keeps me up at night. And God, I know I'm not alone in this, even though it might feel that way. Even though I can't reach out and touch you, I know, God, that you're present because you desire to come and to dwell with us. So, God, let me know your presence here and now. Second, while they were in fear, Christ was present and he represented a faithful step forward. Guys, I want to invite you. The step in our faith is to say, God, I know you're here even though my circumstances are tough. God, I know you're present in the world, even though the world around me seems to be falling apart. I know you're not absent from it. So, God, I lean into you. I take a step towards you, God. Third, 
Jesus commissions them. He sends them. He says to them, get ready to go. I'm sending you out. And, and, you know, think about it. They were in because they were afraid. He says, I'm going to send you out. You're going to go and face those fears, but you won't go alone. Now, don't hear me saying, let's go run out there tomorrow without our masks and without our hand sanitizer, and let's stand way too close to people. We're going to do all the right things, but I do want to say this. We are not, as people of God, called to live in fear. So let's respond to the gospel by loving others well. Partly that means staying inside right now. But it also means that there's going to come a day when we can come back together. So we look faithfully to that day when, when, when the doors are open. And we can, we can accept God calling us to say, go. Go out there. Be zealous for me. Bring joy. Share the good news. Tell somebody that God is present. You can go with full faith and full authority because God is present in your life. And lastly, he knows what each one of us need, that we might be more faithful in following the Christ. For Thomas, he needed to touch and see. Whatever it is that's going on in your life right now, please hear this today. He knows you, and he knows what it is, and he desires to confirm his presence in your life. I want to invite you. Last week, we celebrated the fact that Christ had gone to the cross, gone to the grave, and resurrected. Well, this week, right now, I want to celebrate with you the fact that the resurrected Christ desires to bestow his power and authority over you. This morning, would you yield your heart? Would you be like Thomas and cry out, my Lord, my God, it's you. You're in charge. You lead. I follow. God, you are the one that I say yes to. You are the one that will help me face my fears. You are the one that overcame all things on my behalf. So, God, I know that you are present. I pray, Lord God, that you would give me the power to stand against whatever comes my way in your name. This morning, right where you're at, right here, right now. Might the presence of God overwhelm you. Might the power that only comes present with the Holy Spirit be known by you from this day forward. I want to pray this prayer for you today. Father God, would you allow us to know you? Would you allow us, God, to experience your presence God, would you allow us to battle the fears of life with faith? Our faith is not in our own ability to overcome anything. It is in, we, are, we, we have faith in you and your promised desire to be present with us. Christ, Messiah, Emmanuel, present with your people, breathing the breath of life gifting the Holy Spirit and empowering every one of us to operate in the authority of God. Jesus, thank you for not just your death, not just your life, not just your death, not just your resurrection, but thank you for your daily confirmation that you are present with us through the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, if there's anybody here in the sound of my voice who doesn't yet know you, who might be like Thomas, might be saying, I just need confirmation. Christ, Lord God, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them 
in exactly the way that they need to. God, be the hound of heaven that chases us down. That one day really soon, if each of us has not yet, we'd be able to say, Lord Jesus, I receive you today as the Lord of my life, the forgiver of my sins, the redeemer of my soul. I believe in the work that you've done on the cross. I believe that you defeated death in the grave. And I believe that you resurrected, that I might be able to have life with you forever. My Lord and my God, my fears have no authority that can battle against the presence of God in my life. So I release that and I receive you in faith by the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I want to remind you that as we gather together for this time, as we listen to the word preached, we're each praying that the power and authority of God will be present in our lives. And as an act of worship, I want to echo what Pastor Eric shared and invite you here this morning as you respond to the work of God in your life. Partner with your local church in bringing your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings that he might use them to further the mission that God has prepared in advance for each of us. God bless you this week.
Friends, hear these words from Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Paul writes, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And this part is key. He says, He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? That includes the faith in the midst of fear. God promises to give us everything because he gave us his son. And so, friends, as you are maybe struggling with fear or doubts, know that God is able to even meet you in those moments. God bless you guys. Hey friends, thanks for joining us this morning. We hope that you're encouraged that God is able to give us faith in the midst of fear. We will see you next Sunday at 9 a.m. God bless you guys.